Arg! Why can't I get a stable waveform on my oscilloscope? Ah, I bet it has something to do with triggering. In today's short video, we're going to take a look at demystifying the function of triggering on an oscilloscope. I recently saw a survey that uh, one of the most confusing topics that new users and even experienced users have on scopes is what is meant by triggering, how do I adjust it, how do I use it. So we'll try to clear some of that up here today. Now the main function and purpose of triggering is simply to give you a stable display of your signal of interest on the scope screen. It's as simple as that. Now the confusion often lies is that the analog and digital scope triggering actually have the same end goal, but they go about it in very different ways. Again, the idea is to have essentially a stable uh, waveform on your screen, but they're accomplished very differently between analog and digital scopes. And that's mainly due to the differences in the way that analog and digital scopes operate. Now, there are some common features and controls. We'll talk a little bit about that. But digital scopes offer a whole lot more in terms of capabilities and options. But one common feature about triggering on analog and digital scopes is that the trigger is set up to essentially look for a specific feature or condition on the waveform and put that specific uh, feature in a specific location on the scope screen and display the waveform around that point. Now there are an awful lot of different trigger types and trigger controls. I'm not going to go through all of that in this video, but I will uh, link down in the description down below links to several other videos that I have that talk about various aspects of triggering in terms of controls and features and modes. We're just going to cover some of the basics here today to again just take some of the mystery out of it. We'll focus our time today uh, just on the most common trigger type that's used and probably 95% of the cases that you're using trigger is something called an edge trigger. And what that, what that is, is the scope is looking to trigger when the waveform crosses a specific voltage level that we'll call a threshold, a trigger threshold. And it could be when the input signal is rising above th through that threshold or falling through that threshold. And that's often called the slope, rising slope or falling slope. So the setup is basically telling the trigger system what signal to look at, what threshold you want to set, and whether you want to trigger on the rising or falling edge. Now one common misconception I want to put out here is that the auto trigger mode does not automatically set up the trigger for you. That's not its function. It merely self-triggers the scope when the trigger event that you've set up isn't found. So it's really a visual aid to put some kind of a waveform on the screen even though it's not triggered by your signal so you can see what's wrong so you can set things up properly. So again, auto trigger is not like an auto set for trigger. It just keeps the scope live and running so you're not just staring at a blank screen until your trigger is properly set up. So given that, you know, auto trigger is actually a very good thing because it'll let you at least get something on the screen so you can see I need to adjust my vertical scale or maybe I need to adjust my trigger level up or down. But it gives you some visual reference of something happening rather than just looking at a blank screen. And of course, one of the links down below is a video that I did specifically on the auto trigger mode. Now, I mentioned that the operation of the trigger circuit behaves very differently in analog and digital scopes because the scopes themselves acquire and display signals very differently. An analog scope effectively draws a waveform on the screen by sweeping an electron beam across the phosphor screen internally, and then the, that beam is deflected up or down depending on what the input voltage is doing. And the trigger's job is to essentially kick off that sweep. So the idea is that we start that sweep at the same location or the same spot in the waveform with each successive sweep. So, and this relies on the fact that the waveform is going to have some repetitive nature to it. Because most analog scopes don't have storage and can't show you a single shot, a single waveform. So we're relying on the fact that the waveform is repeating itself and that we're going to start drawing that waveform at the same location in time. Kind of visually that looks like this. So I've got this you know, kind of oddball looking waveform here, maybe a little bit of a heartbeat type of a thing. And let's say I set my trigger level to where this dashed line is and set it to trigger on a rising edge, so rising through that, uh, that threshold. So therefore the sweep is going to start and get kicked off across the screen at that location on the waveform. So I'm going to draw the waveform out like this. And then whatever I set up for my time scale for the sweep is going to determine how much of this waveform I'm going to draw. And then the trigger rearms itself, the beam invisibly zooms back over to the other side of the screen, I wait for the next trigger event, and then I kick off 
this waveform and it draws right on top of the, the previous one that was there. And this repetitive nature of drawing a waveform on top of itself is what causes this trace to get bright and you can actually see it. This is what happens in an analog scope. So let's go take a look at that. So here's my analog scope and I've got the trigger mode set to auto which means since I don't have my trigger set up right the waveform is just walking around. Okay? If I set the mode to normal you'll notice I don't have anything on the screen at all so it's not giving me indication that something is actually happening. So the auto trigger mode can be helpful to at least show you something is happening on the screen. And I can see that this waveform is essentially walking across the screen because it's not triggered because I haven't set that up properly yet. Now some analog scopes will tell you what the trigger level is. You can actually see that uh, kind of right here. I'm triggering time base A on channel 1 and actually it's this level knob right here. And you notice if I turn it up now I can actually see I'm triggering the waveform and I've got a nice stable display. Now you'll notice the slope is set to positive right here. Okay, And as I adjust my threshold up or down we can see the waveform is starting say at a lower spot or a higher spot depending on where I rotate this knob. So this is essentially showing me where my trigger threshold is and where that waveform is starting. Now if I change the slope to negative I'm going to trigger when the signal falls through that threshold. So you'll notice as soon as I switch the slope from positive to negative now I'm triggering on that falling edge of that waveform. And again if I adjust my level up or down we can see I'm just catching the falling edge of that waveform. I switch it back to positive again, now I'm on that positive edge of that waveform. Now of course another thing that can happen, and considering this waveform here, if I adjust my threshold down further, I get to the point where I can get multiple occurrences of a waveform. It looks like it's bouncing back and forth or I've got a double or triple waveform here occurring sometimes because I've got my level essentially set low enough that the rising edge is going to occur you know, here, and I've got another one here, another one here. Any one of these rising edges could cause the trace to start sweeping. So sometimes I'm going to catch one edge, sometimes I'll catch a different one, and on those successive sweeps, I'll get, you know, these, these ghosts of various waveforms moving back and forth. And all that means is that your waveform is satisfying the trigger criteria at multiple points within its repetition. So it just means oftentimes that you need to kind of you know, refocus or, you know, readjust your trigger th you know, levels and things like that so that you're triggering on specifically the edge or feature that you're interested in. Now, of course, one downside to analog scopes like this is that, again, the sweep doesn't get kicked off until the trigger is satisfied. So you really can't see what's going on before the trigger. And this is something that digital scopes bring to the picture, as we'll see shortly. Now, of course, this is a repeating waveform, so I can slow things down and see what uh, is going on you know, before that trigger event because I can see it repeating here and here. And then using the extended time base or second time base, I could zoom in on that portion. And this is what we did with analog scopes before we had the advantage of digital scopes to be able to look before and after trigger. Now, I've got some other videos that I'll link down below that talk about some of the other trigger, con trigger controls beyond uh, the switch between normal and auto trigger mode, uh, the trigger source, trigger coupling, and some other controls like hold off. Again, those are uh, topics that are dealt with in some other videos I've got linked below. Now that we understand how the trigger works on an analog scope and that it literally kicks off the sweep at a user-defined point in the waveform, whether it's rising or falling through a threshold, let's take a look at what the trigger controls do on a digital scope and what those differences are. Now digital scopes you know, don't sweep like an analog scope. So we're not kicking off the sweep of the trigger. So obviously the trigger system is doing something differently. So since the digital scopes are sampling all the time, the trigger is essentially used to help save and display the particular signal of interest. The setup and controls are actually fairly similar to the analog scopes and you're really using them to effectively align on a specific waveform feature like a rising edge, a falling edge, or something like that. And due to the continuous sampling, the acquired waveform can include pre-trigger data because the trigger system's looking at this continuous sampling of the waveform saying, okay, here's your edge. Instead of putting that at the very beginning of the display, I'm going to stick it in the middle so I can see everything to the left of that 
is pre-trigger information. Everything to the right of it is post-trigger. So now I can naturally see what led up to the trigger event and what happened after it. And because we've got this waveform storage, we can actually acquire single shot events. Trigger once, capture the waveform, and then go analyze it as much as you want. So a trigger on a digital scope can be thought of as a, a bookmark or a filter in a sense to only show you what matches that particular trigger criteria. So let's take a look at setting that up on a digital scope. Okay, so here's our same signal and we can see that we're not triggered. We're not getting a stable waveform. And if we look at uh, the trigger menu, we can see that we're in auto trigger mode. Now this scope will also show you effectively where the trigger level is. That's that little arrow right here. So I adjust my trigger level down. Now I'm doing the same thing. I'm triggering on, in this case, an edge trigger. We can see a rising edge trigger. And we can see the threshold there. And I can see I'm triggering on a, that rising edge of that waveform. All right. Uh, under the menu, we can switch to the other slope. Now I'm triggering on the falling edge and rising edge. Now one important difference is you'll notice that my trigger location is right here in the middle of the screen not at the uh, far left edge of the screen. So I'm seeing pre-trigger information and post-trigger information. So that's one big difference with digital scopes is you have that pre-trigger view. In fact, we can actually move this position back and forth and get mostly pre-trigger information or mostly post-trigger information, depending on where we position the horizontal uh, position control. So you've got that advantage with uh, digital scopes and being able to look at pre- and post-trigger data. Now while most analog scopes are limited to simply an edge trigger, rising or falling edge, or maybe trigger on uh, the, the AC line voltage, um, digital scopes offer many more different trigger types to trigger on different aspects of a signal, like a particular pulse width or a timeout period, how long the signal stays below or be above or below a threshold, as well as runt pulses and things like that. But we'll just focus on the edge trigger today. Uh, but uh, the digital scopes do offer many more trigger modes to isolate particular events of interest to put them on the screen. Now the trigger mode, if we switch it to normal, uh, we can see we're triggering normally here now. If I adjust my threshold, uh, go trigger threshold here. You'll notice that the display just freezes. I'm not triggered anymore, uh, but also it's just showing me the last triggered waveform that I had. So it's not updating. But once I th go down and bring that trigger level back into the waveform itself, now I'm updating again. And again, it's fine to leave your scope in auto trigger mode because when the trigger event is satisfied, you'll get a trigger display. If the trigger event is not satisfied, it becomes obvious from the display that you're not triggered properly. Now on a digital scope, one uh, case where you might not want to leave the scope in auto mode is if you want to capture a single event. For example, if you're sending a set of instructions to a microcontroller over, say, an I2C bus or something like that, you only want to capture that set of instructions and that's it. So what you may do then is set the trigger mode to normal set up your threshold properly, then have your microcontroller send that instruction, capture it on the screen, and then it stays there so you can do your analysis. Of course, that's one of the advantages of a digital scope is you have that storage capability. You know, other controls such as the source and trigger coupling and slope and level, these are all common to what you would have on an edge trigger on an analog scope as well. Now, of course, it's still important to trigger on appropriate portion of the waveform. For example, if I adjust this threshold down, I might trigger on that rising edge, or this edge, or this edge, or this edge. And depending on which one I trigger on, that's what's going to line up at the trigger location, which means I'm going to see multiple images of this waveform kind of lying on top of each other, something like that. Again, no different than what we saw on the analog scope. Now, if you do a single capture, it's going to just capture it once, but depending on which portion of the waveform we're actually going to see. Sometimes we'll capture it triggered here, sometimes triggered there, or whatever. So this is where it's important, again, to set the trigger level appropriately. So in summary, triggering can be kind of a confusing topic, but at the end of the day, it's designed to show you a nice, stable waveform. And the scopes will generally, again, try to help you out. The auto mode will allow you to see that something is being put into the scope, but it's not being synchronized properly because of the trigger. Uh, oftentimes with the digital scopes, like this has got the adjustable knob for the trigger level, 
uh, hitting, pushing on that knob will actually automatically set the trigger level to be at 50% of the signal amplitude, so that makes it nice and handy. Might be a good starting point. And again, probably 95% of the time, maybe even more often, a simple edge trigger, triggering on a rising or falling edge, is all you'll ever need to look at your waveforms. Uh, when you get more advanced, you may take advantage of some of the additional advanced trigger modes to capture particular complex waveforms onto the screen. But again, for most users, 95% of the time, you're looking at a simple uh, rising edge trigger with a threshold that you can adjust to get a nice stable waveform on your screen. So I hope this short video gave you a little bit of insight in terms of the function of what a trigger does and the basic controls to kind of get it started. Again, be sure to check the links I have down below that will dig into various other trigger topics, both on analog and digital scopes. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you again next time.